Hey everyone, thanks for joining us today for this chat with Manny Jacinto from The Good Place. Um, I miss the show so much, like we have a lot to talk about. But first I wanna tell you about the sag After Foundation uh, is raising funds for our COVID-19 Emergency Assistance Fund. The fund is helping to support actors who are currently out of work due to all of the closed film and television productions right now. It's helping people pay basic expenses such as mortgages and rent payments and utilities and even just to buy much needed groceries. Um, more details are below this video, so please check it out and consider supporting and donating if you're able to. So thanks for that. Now let's chat with Manny Jacinto. Uh, Manny, how are you doing? How's, how's life right now in this quarantine pandemic era? I'm getting by, Jim, I'm getting by. <laughs> um, yeah, me and the lady are, um, you know, this is kind of the most time we've spent kind of clustered together for, um, yeah, in, in a long time, so you, really learn how to communicate and then and, and learn that communication is key but I mean she's been doing a lot of cooking I've been trying to help and by help I mean just a lot of eating and, uh, um yeah just trying to stay sane um yeah. you know whether it be like reading writing playing video games yeah um, yeah Overcooked too has really helped our relationship. I think. That's good. <laughs> I feel I feel like there is a good side to this, even though it's hard to think about that sometimes. But it is like spending time with your loved ones a little more than you normally would, and being able to focus on some stuff instead of knowing you have to run off to this and that. It's it's that's I guess that's maybe an upside to it. Yeah, definitely. I think having this quiet time has definitely allowed me to to figure out what I actually want to do, and yeah, it's like. I, I've been pushing off writing for, for a long time. So now I really have no excuse. It's like, right. what, what else am I going to do? <laughs> well, last time we talked, the good place was just about to air its finale. And now it's, it has already been four or five months now. Oh. Um, and because maybe it's because of the pandemic, it might feel differently, but does it feel like a long time ago for you? Or does it feel like just yesterday that you guys were shooting those last scenes? It, Kind of feels like a long time, yeah. I think, but I think it has a lot to do with, with um, with this pandemic situation. Just because you know, when when you get off the show, hopefully you get onto the next one, and then you, you kind of work on that. But it it almost just feels like I'm sure, and hopefully maybe a lot of actors feel this way. Just because we haven't worked in a while, it just seems like we haven't really done anything in a while. So um, it's, yeah, it's really, it's a weird feeling um, because I, have, I, yeah, I haven't done anything else other than sit in my room and eat ice cream. <laughs> it's not a bad way to live. Yeah. Um, talk to me about when you first landed the role of Jason. Um, I remember you telling me in our podcast that we did just about the auditioning and all of that. But just, I felt like watching those first episodes, you had, even though Jason didn't say a lot in those first episodes, you yeah. still had a lot of him down, at least it seemed like you did, as far as who he was and his mannerisms, and as he did start to speak more like who he was. But was it easy for you, or was it kind of a challenge to find that voice of who, he, who this guy was? I mean, when we, when we, when the audition came around the first time, um, I mean, I came in with a with a choice, a, a very particular choice, <laughs> and um, in even in the audition room, um, from the first audition to the callback, we definitely kind of finessed things with um, with the producers. And I remember, you know, first seeing Mike and Andrew for the first time, and them giving me notes. Uh, but yeah, I think going into the first episode, I was I definitely knew what my choices were going in and kind of who this guy was. But because of the fact that I didn't have to speak uh, necessarily, yeah. I could study kind of the tone of the show as well and, and see if, if, if what, I, what I was about to do will fit. Um, and, uh, you know, I was going into a show with, you know, T legend Ted, Ted Danson and, and Super yeah. Mom and Bell. So it's, it can get intimidating. But, you know, I was, I was able to, to kind of, you know, uh, just do baby steps getting into yeah. getting into the show um, and kind of analyze things before Jason revealed himself. And it's, and it is an art, I think for actors. I mean, you've done other jobs, but because you are working with, you know, Ted Danson, I remember watching him when I was in like in high school and cheers and that, yeah, yeah. and you end up getting to work with him. How do you, how do you separate that kind of just that part of your brain that's just kind of freaking out? And then the other part is like, Hey, I'm here to do a job. Is that a challenge or something you had to work at? To be honest, it's almost like acting when you're not acting. <laughs> it's like I like 
having uh, an acting persona when you're just on set, mm -hmm. uh, being Manny, uh, you know, not freaking out, not wanting to ask all the questions of what it was like on Cheers, um, not wanting to ask every single Frozen question. Um, it's, <laughs> it's like, yeah, it's, it's really, it's, it's funny. Um, and I remember times even like when this, I've never, I've never actually said this before, but like even with running lines, there'd be times where I would study whether or not like, like in the table read, like you don't want to seem too, too prepared, but not underprepared. So it's yeah. like you just kind of adjust to what other people are doing because you don't want to seem like the try hard or the, <laughs> the lazy bum. It's, 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 it's a weird game, but um, yeah. yeah, it's almost like acting with an acting. Just kind of yeah, like, I get like that every, when I do interviews, sometimes I'm talking to somebody who I've been watching my whole life and it does in the back of my head. I'm like, okay, I'm talking to Ted Danson right now or, you know, somebody <laughs> like that. It's, it's wild. So I have to keep my composure too and like not freak out too much. Mm -hmm. um, but also one thing I always loved about you playing Jason through the whole run of the show was even though Jason might be quote, not very smart. Um, <laughs> You played it really well, though, because I think there's choices there that um, you talked about the choices that you made, because there's a way I think it's a, it's a craft to be able to play a character like that and not just come off as kind of writing somebody off like, oh, he's just dumb. So let's, you know, there's but there's more to him there. Um, but was that something that you had had to think a lot about? The fact that Jason was very simple in the way he thought and acted? Yeah, I mean, especially when you have someone who is uh, very oblivious to circumstances and <laughs> very not not very intelligent you got you have he has to have redeeming quality and with yeah with jay it's easy for the audience to be annoyed or uh, or to get mad or pissed off um by this just this dumb person constantly ruining or foiling people's plans or or, or the scene that's going on so you got you have to have redeeming qualities and i guess the biggest redeeming quality of jason is just you know his heart you know i i, yeah. I definitely tend to feel that he was you know, a, a big, uh, he definitely had a big heart and he could be the heart of the group, but he, he, he may not have, um, intellectually, there may not be a lot of things going on up there, but I think he has a lot of emotional, emotional yeah. intelligence, which yeah. is his redeeming factor. And what, what was your take on the show itself when, you know, if you watched the show from the beginning, you know, it did change over time because I think they had to tool around with the concept a little bit and take it to the next level every season. Was that something, sure. as one of the actors on the show, was that something that you could have a dialogue with the producers about so you would kind of understand where they were going or even have input to what they're doing? Yeah, I mean, the, the, great, the greatest thing with, with Mike is that he's very transparent. Um, so w whenever we went into a season, um, like either a week or two weeks beforehand, he'd break down the whole season of what he was thinking about. And it's just an outline of a plan. It's not necessarily concrete because things can always change, but Mike was always very open um, to, to his actors to, uh, in regards to, to letting them know what's, what was going to happen, at least in the, in the second, third and fourth season. I, I mean, he definitely had his reasons for not, for withholding information during the first season, sure. but he definitely still gave us information that was useful to us um, without having to break our characters or overthink things. Yeah. Um, yeah, and it's not always the case that you get to do that, uh, you know? Uh, so, yeah, that was really fortunate. Yeah, when, when did you find out, and spoiler alert if people haven't watched the first season, but when did you f personally find out that the good place was actually the bad place? Because that was the big spoiler at the end of season one. Is that something you'd figured out, or did they tell you, or when did you find it out? It was, um, and I'm sure people would be able to find a video on, on YouTube, but <laughs> luckily Kristen videotaped it. But it was, I believe, around episode nine or 10 of the first season when um, Mike sat us down. I think it was in, I want to say it was after we were done shooting for the day. And I think yeah. throughout the morning, it was, I think, amongst the cast, we were like, oh, I think Mike wants to talk to us. Uh, <laughs> things going down that something might be wrong we don't know um so he wanted to sit us down and i was i mean i was sweating in my palms i was ready to i was ready to book it back to vancouver because i thought i either didn't have a job or actually the other theory that i had was that the babies of the 
of the group, um, Will, Jamila, Darcy, and I, um, were going to take over for the show because I thought that Ted and Kristen had bigger things to do. Oh, okay. <laughs> but no, um, luckily they stuck around and and um, and hung out with us uh, for another three seasons. Um, yeah. And then that's when they revealed that the good place was the bad place. That's such a great twist because even I remember watching that first season and being like, how are they going to sustain this for, you know, yeah. at that time you think a show might run five or seven years if it's a success. But I thought it was, it was so smart to shift it that way. Yeah, I mean, I definitely feel that with... I mean, anybody, any, anybody could have fallen into the trap of trying to prolong things. Like yeah. We could have had a whole a first season of just, um, you know, Eleanor finding her way in, in, the, in the good place. And then at the end of the first season, we learned that she's not supposed to be there. But yeah. we get to that um, plot point within the first episode. Right. Um, yeah. I think so. yeah, I think it was the first episode, yeah. Yeah, and I think it might have been even in the trailer. It was, it was just, with, with this show, these writers with Mike, he, they just plowed through story and twists, and, and the ride was, was like a time warp. It was nuts. Um, they, yeah. Yeah, they burned through story like, like crazy. Um, yeah. Well, and I also feel like out of the whole cast, you probably had the easiest time in wardrobe because for a while you just wore a robe and then it was track suits for the most part and tank yeah. tops. <laughs> I had the easiest wardrobe ever. Um, and, and it's not, you know, it's not the, the coolest spot at the back lot in, at Universal. So it can get really hot, especially during the summer months. So I, yeah. I had um, yeah, and especially when you compare it to Will, who's wearing turtlenecks and, and wool blazers. Yeah, my God. Um, talk about, I, was, I rewatched the finale earlier today just to remind myself, you know, how it all wrapped up. But, I, you know, you and Darcy Carden, who played Janet, you had such a sweetness in that relationship. And I don't remember if we talked about this before, but when, when did the idea come to put those characters together? I don't know if it was just because they saw the chemistry if the writer saw it or if it was in the plans early on or wh what do you remember? Because didn't, didn't um, Jason and Jamila's character, didn't they hooked up early, right? They, yeah. That was later on as to create yeah. a love angle between, um, between uh, Jason and Janet. Okay. Right. Um, no, I mean, I, I want to say that that pairing was, uh, was there in the beginning. Uh, it was okay. kind of, was in the books in the beginning um in in regards to like the extent of it or as to whether or not they would end up together in the end i don't know if that was the case but i mean it's really not hard to you know not love darcy like <laughs> the easiest job in the world to to have scenes with her and to just hang out with her and to talk to her um yeah so like our chemistry together offset maybe uh contributed to to pursuing that storyline further um i don't want to take too much credit but yeah all i know is that you know it's a, um, uh like the, the funnest the most fun scenes that i have on the show are with are with darbs or with darcy yeah. Carden. so yeah um yeah if anything i was lucky to just have her play along with me they're very sweet um do you remember just in the course of the whole series or maybe the last season any any part of the show that was actually challenging for you either a scene that you had to do as Jason or, and, and challenging could be, you couldn't stop laughing or yeah. something, but does anything come to mind? Just one or two moments from the show? Um, I mean, the first thing that pops up was like the, the dance sequences that I had. Um, yeah. I remember, like, I think it was in the third season, uh, maybe a second. Um, and then the last sequence in the finale. Yeah. Um, it was just a lot of pressure, uh, especially the last sequence um, cause I, like, as I do, I am a dancer and I do used to perform on stage, but you typically have like, you know, a good week or so at least to, to rehearse and practice. But I think, you know, we only had a day, um, or an evening, um, to kind of learn everything. And then we had to showcase it to, to the crew. Um, and then because it was a, uh, it was a peculiar day and we had a lot of guest stars that day. So yeah. they stuck around uh, <laughs> from the morning uh, or just the whole day just to see this, 
this dance performance and just it added added so much pressure to to perform but it was at the end at the end of the day it was really fun but yeah that was probably the biggest challenges if anything um that come off the top of my head well because you have a dance background would they have you just choreograph it or would they bring somebody in <laughs> luckily luckily they just let me focus on the acting rather than <laughs> And, uh, yeah, I mean, I don't know. It's, it's it's also been a while, so, you know, the body doesn't move like it used to, but, right. <laughs> um, yeah, we'll see. <laughs> well, and I meant to start the conversation off with just your, your early part of your life before you were an, considered an actor. Like, is this something that you were dreaming to do, and was this the plan, or did just life take you this way? Um, life definitely took me this way. I think it was just a matter of listening to, to my to this cur- curious voice that's that's like this is super fun let's keep doing this <laughs> um, you know whether it be in dance or in acting it was just being like okay let's just take this step and and see what happens it's it's fun and i i, I feel passionate about it um what can go wrong um yeah. so yeah it was definitely never if you would have told me that i'd be in la right now you know acting um you know, uh, playing Maple Leaf for a living, um, I'd call you crazy. Yeah. Um, you know, yeah. I can't remember who it was, but somebody I interviewed had said that it was very kind of a surprise the first time they actually said, like, I'm an actor. Like, somebody said, oh, what do you oh. do? And they're like, oh, I'm an actor. Like, that's my job. But they said yeah. it was really weird. and It was kind of empowering to say it. Do you, does you share oh, any yeah. of that? Definitely. I mean, even when you are a working actor, um, or you've done gigs every once in a while, like a, a guest star here or a co-star here, you're very reluctant to to call yourself an actor because maybe you don't want to jinx it or there's a lot of insecurity involved. Yeah. Um, you know, you have this part-time job. So do you, like as a, <laughs> you know, as a server, am I a server? Am I an actor? There's a lot of like identity issues associated to, to that type of stuff. Um, so yeah, I definitely relate to that insecurity. So um uh, I think it, it and it, I think it's very um, to each his own. Like you kind of decide when you allow yourself to say that you're an actor. Yeah. I mean, it sounds so pretentious and deep, but um, yeah, it's it, it, it could be a pretty big deal. Yeah, no, I, th- I could see that. Um, because I rewatched the finale, I wanted to. And before, I think last time I talked to you, it hadn't aired yet, so we couldn't dive into too deep because I didn't. I hadn't seen it yet. They didn't let us see it early. But what what did you think of the finale? As far as you know, just everybody kind of making their own choice. That's like, hey, I think I'm ready to walk through. I love that that was their choice. It wasn't like just life took them away or whatever. But yeah. what was your first impression? Now that we can actually talk about it. I mean, it was so sad. I mean, I don't. <sighs> We, I, the first thing that's popping up into in, in my head is is um, I remember we received the the script um, for I think during or before Comic Con, mm-hmm. and I chose not to read it. I just did not want. I just wanted to kind of enjoy the Comic Con yeah. and <laughs> get it with, um, and be with the cast. Um, and I remember going home in in I think the van uh, and. And, and Darcy was reading it and she was crying. Oh no. Like, oh man, this is gonna, she, and she was, yeah, like almost throughout, she just couldn't, you know, stop the tears. And, and I was very nervous about reading it because yeah, I didn't want to judge it. I just wanted to be, I just wanted to experience it for the first time. And, and I think when I first read it, and I think I've said this before, like after I read it, uh, the, the finale, I just had to call my parents. I had to be like, mm. I just had to check in on them, if anything, you know, because, yeah. you know, for those who have seen the finale, it just, it deals with, you know, saying goodbye. Um, I don't know if I want to say any spoilers, but it just, it really, it can hit home for a lot of people. And yeah. uh, for me, it it hit home in the sense that I needed to to just talk to my, to my family um, for even if it was just for five minutes and to see how they were doing. Um, and then when we, when we filmed everything, it's, yeah, I mean, those feelings, those same feelings of, um, having to say goodbye, were still there. And now it just resonated within the cast rather than just my immediate family. Like we actually have to say goodbye. This is the last scene that I'm having with Jamila or with, with Kristen or yeah, that was pretty heartbreaking. Yeah. And I have to say as a viewer, 
and as a TV person that has to watch a lot of television, it was such a, it was a, it was a really good finale in that regard because it had that level of joy and sadness kind of running alongside each other instead of one overpowering, you know, if that makes Thanks. sense. Yeah. Oh yeah. And that's a, that's a hard, that's a tricky, you know, that's a tricky platform. Like to, a lot of times you can go too emotional in a finale, you know, or yeah. not too funny or too funny and then not, you know, completing things. Um, but I mean, Mike and those writers, like they, uh, they knocked it out of the park. Yeah. I have to tell you, I was, I was in Thailand on vacation um, oh, when the finale aired. Okay. And so I think I even tried, maybe they sent me a link like the day of the finale or something, but it wouldn't work because I was in Thailand on vacation. Okay. And so I had to wait till I got back, which wasn't until like mid February. We took like a long vacation before the pandemic hit. And so I remember seeing people tweeting that night and yeah. I'm being like, I can't look at Twitter because I was worried people would spoil it. And I wasn't spoiled. So you know, it's just a little side story, but I was so glad that once we got home, I was like, we have to watch the finale now so I know what happens. Oh, well, that's great. Yeah, it's definitely an experience, you know? Yeah. Um, I mean, and yeah, I'm just, I'm lucky that I, I was a part of the show, but I'm also, yeah, a very big fan of the show as well. And that's not always the case. Yeah. Now, um, true or false, do you have Jason's gold chain in your possession ah <laughs> I don't okay oh, man. i should have kept that oh man. i was just thinking if there's anything you would keep it might be the gold chain um yeah no i never even thought of keeping that one no I, I don't have it maybe i can track it down though i'll talk to to kirsten man or maybe our props people yeah it might still be in a box somewhere who knows um what, and what, how did you watch the finale? Like, the, did you watch it the night it aired? Like, did you guys get together and watch it, or did you watch we, it on your own? Yeah, we did the Seth Meyers um, kind oh, of right. like, you know, get together goodbye. Um, so before, I think the night before we before it aired and before we went on to, went, went on to Seth Meyers, we um, we had a gathering at a hotel, um, like a little screening with. With like Mike and, and the cast and some of our producers and their families um, and their loved ones. And it was nice. It was like a nice intimate night um, for us to kind of just relish and, and, and cherish the time that we had together for one last episode. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That's awesome. Well, now, despite our pandemic era we're living through right now, yeah. your name is still in the headlines. You're still making deals and shows are being <laughs> announced and things are happening. Um, how, how did you think about like what's next? Like, even though you might've had some things already in the works, but you kind of, you come to the end of a series and it's like, okay, what am I going to do next? What was in your thinking there? Anything other than Jason Mendoza <laughs> <laughs> was literally my mentality. Like I, yeah, I definitely get scared of being pinned uh, into a corner of a certain character. And, yeah. you know, I like acting. I like being other people and, and playing make-believe. So, yeah, I think the my basic guideline was to stay away from the, the Jason Mendoza um, archetype. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean... I mean, I would love to eventually one day revisit it, you know, The Good Place, the movie. Um, sure, Kobe sure. Jason, the spinoff. <laughs> for 15, 20 years, I think okay. I, I exercise different muscles. Well, I know one, one of the things you have coming up, um, hopefully later this year, if we get back into theaters, Top Gun, Maverick. Um, I know you can't say a lot about it, but what, it, what did it mean just to be a part of that? Because as soon as people heard about it and that trailer dropped, people freaked oh, yeah. out, myself included. I mean, yeah, thanks. Yeah, like it's, it's I mean, it's an iconic movie. Um, I remember seeing posters uh, like in my uncle's bar, like where I would be in like I was where I was practically raised. Like I, my mom actually just recently told me that when, um, when she was, uh, when she was pregnant with me, she was like, I really like my, my son to look like, or be like Tom Cruise. Um, <laughs> so things like that. You can't help but feel a little bit of being a part of it. Right. But, um, <laughs> it was, uh, yeah. I mean, it's freaking Top Gun to be, yeah. part of something like that is is crazy uh 
um, you know, it's, we'll see. I mean, fingers crossed that it'll come out once this craziness. Yeah. Happens. Okay. What can you say yeah. about brand new cherry flavor? Cause I know it's like a horror anthology for Netflix. Yes. Yeah. Um, it's by some really super smart people. Um, Lenora Zion and Nick Antosca. Um, like they, I don't have a horror mindset or like, I'm not the type to watch horror because okay. um, yeah. uh, I get scared. Like, yeah, I'm just the biggest scaredy cat. But uh, yeah, like they have done some great things, um, some very weird things. Um, and this show is going to be very weird. And I like, I like weird rather than, oh, I've seen that before. So yeah, and it's with some amazing people too from Catherine Keener to Rosa Salazar, Eric Lang, Jeff Ward. They're all wonderful people. And damn, I just, I, I mean, I can't wait for people to see it. Um, I don't know if I'll watch it, <laughs> but maybe I'll like listen while, uh, while I have it playing. But, um, okay. but that's yeah. been shot. You've already shot that. So it could show up sometime soon. Yes. Fingers crossed. Okay. Uh, maybe early next year. Um, okay. But who knows? Yeah. Okay, one that was just announced, I think, yesterday or the day before, um, Nine Perfect Strangers, which sounds really cool, but another yeah. really cool concept. But talk about what what are you playing in that? And you have a couple of co-stars I think people will know. Yeah, a couple, a couple of rookies. Um, <laughs> um, yeah, uh, uh, Nine Perfect Strangers by Leanne Moriarty. She's the author behind uh, Big Little Eyes. Um, and also I think, I believe David E. Kelly's behind this as well. Um, you know, just a rookie in the game. Yeah. Um, no. So, <laughs> uh, we'll see how this one goes, but no, um, no, I mean, I mean, to be honest, this is, this is, I couldn't have asked for, a, for a crazier, crazier project to be a part of. Um, uh, I don't know when we're going to be able to shoot this, but. Yeah, it's, it's yours for Hulu. Um, uh, I think in the breakdown, it explained that I'm kind of, in a sense, like, long story short, like the right-hand man to, to, to Masha, who runs this health resort clinic, um, okay. who is played by uh, Nicole Kidman. And, um, yeah, and kind of just the wheelings and dealings of this, of this resort. Um, and, yeah, I mean, I can't wait to, to play. Um, yeah. Um, yeah, we'll see. Well, it sounds like a lot of fun. It'll be, it'll be fun to see you in all these different roles because people, a lot of people got introduced to you as Jason. So now to see you do some yeah. other things, it'll be really fun to see what else you got in your arsenal as an actor. Yeah. I have a feeling, you know, Jason Mendoza, um, and, and those Molotov cocktails are going to be following me, following me around. <laughs> but, uh, it's not a bad thing. Um, yeah. Yeah, because he's definitely going to be a part of me for a really long, long time. Yeah. Well, Manny, thank you so much for another great chat. It's always fun talking to you about everything. Yeah, yeah. likewise. All um, right. This is fun. Thank you. <laughs>